Hey you, you wanna see me do a magic trick? You wanna see me make two muffins appear out of thin air? Well, check it out. Please tell me you can see that. Please tell me you can see. Hey muffins, there they are, here's my Ralphie, hello buddy. Boom. Mr. Mouse, come here silly, come here shy little guy. Boom. You're welcome. Yeah, they aren't used to being behind me while I'm recording and shouting and stuff. So Mouse is rightfully confused. <laughs> but anyways, people, here we are. We are going to be diving in to the incredible, wild, wacky world of YouTuber pets. This is one of our favorite topics to talk about on the channel, and I am so excited. If you have pets, if you're thinking about getting some pets, this is the video for you. We are gonna be checking out videos from some of our favorite creators. The odd ones out, talking about some cats. I'm sorry, my voice cracked in a very annoying way there. <laughs> young Young Tails. Weird pets I had. Great animations. And the highly, highly requested Emiritual. That's right, we are going to be looking at some familiar faces and diving into some new channels that we have not reviewed before. But it is all about pets. And so we are going to dive in and have some fun. And have some fun with the muffins as well. Isn't that right, baby bears? Mr. Ralphie, isn't that right? Come here, Ralph. Get it. There you go, bud. Okay, Mouse, if you want it, you gotta come get it. Don't be so shy, Mr. Man. Don't be so shy, mister. Okay, people, let's start out with the goat. The odd one's out. Our couch. Muffins, you might want to cover your ears for this one. I know you probably don't like this creature too much. <laughs> All right, sorry, guys. The odd one's out. Cats. Three, two, uno, go. If you thought my family owned a lot of hamsters, wait till I tell you about all the cats we had. <laughs> Just a heads up though, some of these cats are dead. They all lived nine happy lives. None of them had a painful death. Except for one, oh, no. maybe. We oh, don't no. know. We'll get into that. <laughs> so cats. Some people think cats are jerks and not as loyal or loving as dogs. And they're right, but if you think about it, cats improve our lives every day. Think back to YouTube in 2006. Oh, true. What was popular? Cat videos. I mean, some of y'all know this, some of y'all don't. Listen, if you're a Zoomer in the chat, you may not realize the stranglehold that cat videos had on the internet when internet videos were a new thing. I know it's a meme now, but it's no joke. Cat videos were the lifeblood of the internet at a certain point. And listen, I'm still liable to watch a cat video. I ain't even afraid to say it. Mouse, I'm not afraid to say it, buddy bear. I'm not afraid to say it, Mr. Man. I'm not afraid to say it. But I would never let a cat around you, those savage beasts. Hey, Ralphie. Okay, here you go. You don't have to split. You don't have to go into... All right. What was popular? Cat videos. If it wasn't for cats, we wouldn't have YouTube as a platform. Maybe. Which I could make the argument Maybe. is another jerk thing cats did. Now, I'm a cat lover, and anyone who says they dislike cats has obviously never snuggled up with a cat and had it purr on your chest as you pet it for so long that you both fall asleep and all your anxieties melt away and the only thing you care about is your fragile feline friend. All right or they're allergic. Honestly, I think I'm slightly allergic to cats as well. Cause every time I snuggle up with one, my eyes get all watery, my nose gets all stuffy. But like, I can deal with that. Maybe this is what love feels like. <laughs> I don't know. Typically with animals, I don't like bury my face in their fur like I did when I was a kid because it gives you acne. I feel like if you're burying your face in the fur, don't be surprised if you deal with some kind of symptoms, whether it's the sniffles, whether it's a little bit of acne, you know? I just don't do that. People like to put everybody into two categories. Either you're a dog person or a cat person. <laughs> but why do I have to pick just one? Can't I look at these two animals and say that both of them have good qualities that make them amazing pets? Yeah. Why can't no, I both? that is not a good quality. James, 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 James. I do not approve. I do not approve. Use a humane trap. If you have a mouse or a rat in your house, please try to get a humane trap. But at the same time, I know, I know if you have a pet cat, this is just nature and that's how it's gonna happen. So it's like, you know, but just do what you can to not, you know, slay an innocent muffin. If you can avoid that, that would be much appreciated. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Why can't I pick both? I, I'm bisexual for animals. 
wait. That being said, here's all the cats I had growing up. So our family okay. had just moved to our new house and we we're all getting ready to go to church when my older brother, who was outside for some reason instead of getting ready, heard noises coming from a bush. And when he went to investigate, he found a little baby tabby kitten. Oh. He told my parents about the cat and they said its mom was probably looking for it. But oh. if the cat was still there when we got back from church, then we could let it inside. <sighs> and after we got oh my back, gosh. my brother checked the bush. And the cat was still there. Oh my so gosh. we took her in, we fed her, and we decided to name her Shady after Eminem's The Real Slim Shady because she was an obnoxious wow. cat and didn't like us at all. Yeah, but she's so cute though. Oh! <laughs> Yo, great reference. Yeah, but he's so cute though. Yeah, he's probably got a couple of screws up in his head loose, but no worse than what's going on in your parents' bit. I'm I'm very surprised that a Mormon family would be cool with uh, an Eminem reference as a cat name, but that's cool. Yeah, but she's so cute though. Yeah. And that's how our family got our one and only cat. One cat is enough. There were no more cats. Yay. Until one night when I was sitting at the kitchen table and through the window of the back door, I saw two yellow eyes staring at me. And as a kid, I still thought monsters are real. So I pointed it out to my family, hey, there's eyes outside. And everyone turned and was like, what the? So we opened the back door and a piece of the night just walked into the house like a <laughs> there or something. Does this mean we have a bad piece luck? of the night? Apparently, just waltzing in our house uninvited is a very effective strategy to get adopted because she ended up living with us for the rest of her cat life. What? My older sister loved Sailor Moon, and in the show, there's this black cat named Luna. Spoiler alert, Luna's actually an alien that can turn into a human sometimes, but most of the time, she's just a cat. <sighs> James, I was gonna watch it. I'm just kidding, I was never gonna watch Sailor Moon. Man, is this something that families just do? Just let cats in? I hear about this from some people. It's like, yeah, this was a stray cat and it, it wanted to live with us, so it lived with us. I think just the place where I lived growing up didn't have stray cats like that, or all the stray cats got taken in by other families, because my family would never do that in a million years. I mean, I guess I wouldn't either. That's a commitment. What was that? What was that? You hungry? You want more food? You want more food, muffin bears? You look at his chops, you see it? Here you go, Ralphie. <coughs> Mouse. Mouse. Over here. Athleticism. There you go. So we named the cat after her. And little old Luna fit great in our home. Yay. We were your standard nuclear family with two cats. Just two. We never got another cat ever again. No. Until one day. Until one day, this other cat appeared in our backyard. We put Luna's and Shady's food bowls outside, which meant our backyard was basically really? a cat sanctuary for any cat that could jump our fence. And sometimes we would see a cat hanging out in our backyard. We didn't know if she already had a home, and she would run away from us if we got close. So, we left out a third food bowl for her. Wow. And then she invited some of her siblings along because two other cats decided to chill <laughs> in our backyard. And one of the cats was a boy, which meant we had to get all five cats neutered. And just wow. like that, we more than doubled the amount of cats we had. We were feline pretty good. What, 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 yeah, this is an average, right? This is not an average American household, right? Y'all just don't stack up the cats, right? Right? There's some thought that goes into the having cats. Why would the food bowl be outside? Isn't the point of having a house? House that you have things in the house that are just for the things that live in the house? Isn't that kind of the point? When you put something outside the house, then it's not just for you, it's for... Y'all were asking for this. I guess they were asking for it. They wanted more cats, and more cats is what they got. What they got. Three more cats added to the family, because why not? That's the perfect amount of cats Stop you Stop it, James. <laughs> I'm going to name them now. What? We're not getting three more cats. Two is enough. What? We can't just kick them out. We're going to find them a new home, but we're not keeping them. Fair. Okay. Also, you're not allowed to name them. What? If you name them, then you'll, you'll get, get attached. attached to them, and we're not keeping them. So since our mom banned us from naming the cats, we called them the Calico Cat and the two other ones. And we kept calling okay. them this until our mom found them a new home. Turns out that their new home was our home, because my mom no! never found them a new home. No! So we just left them food outside, and they were happy with that relationship. They would let you pet them sometimes and even sit on your lap, but if you tried to pick them up, they would hiss and bite you. They did Yikes. not like being picked up or being inside. They were feral cats.
One time it was raining, so he thought it would be a good idea to bring the calico cat inside, but she freaked out. She hissed and scratched us. She hated being inside more than she hated the rain. Yeah, these cats don't understand what a house is. They have no con- a, a creature that has only lived its life outside? When you bring it inside, it's like, what is this place? WHAT KIND OF PLACE IS THIS?! They don't understand. Where'd my muffins go? Hey, is there a muffin back there? Oh, there's one. Hey, mouse! She hated being inside more than she hated the rain. And by the way, cats can be very loud. Like, yes. as loud as dogs. Yes. They just never raise their voices. They're too proper for that. So since she didn't like being inside, we just put her back outside in the pouring rain. That's what we you get. We ended up naming the boy cat Spot, the other cat we named Pepper, and the Calico? We didn't change her name. <laughs> we named her Calico. That's like naming a dog Golden Retriever or Chihuahua. I don't know if that's sad. But you know what is sad? One day, Spot just disappeared. He stopped showing up to the Aww. house, and we never saw him again. I hope Aww. he found a good home, but who knows, you know? Maybe he went off to start a second life, or a fifth or sixth life. Get it? Because they have nine lives. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I was in high school when Shady died. She had a good home with us, but it was her time to go. So we were down to three cats and we never got another cat ever again. Why did you wait till halfway through the video to show the uh, actual cat pics? No wonder why this is the most replayed part in the video. Oh my goodness. James, where are the photos of you with Shady? We got Luna, we got Calico, and we got Peppa. Pepper, I don't like the way you're staring. I don't know if you're staring at me or the muffins, but you cannot have them. I know they are tasty muffins, but they are not to be consumed. They are cuddle muffins. So we were down to three cats and we never got another cat ever again. But then one day my parents were out on a walk and my mom saw a scrawny black kitten on the side of the road and she said, can we keep it? But my Aww. dad said, no, keep walking, keep walking. And then on their way back from the walk, for some reason my dad didn't take a different route, the <laughs> cat was still there, meowing at them. So my parents brought her home and my twin sister named her Pepsi. My sister Pepsi. really loved Pepsi. I was more of a Coke person myself. But when my sister went off to college and I stayed home for community college, we let Pepsi outside one day and she didn't come back. We didn't know how to tell my sister that our cat was missing, so we didn't, but we were all really worried. We put up missing posters, and after almost two months of being missing, she just appeared in the backyard. Yay! I don't know what happened in that two month period. She looked fine. Maybe she got adopted by another family, and now some poor family is missing her oh cat. Oh my Salem. gosh. Maybe she went out looking and for the money. cycle repeats. These cats, they just do their own thing. These cats. You can take the cat out of the streets, but you can't take the streets out of the cat. And that's just life. That's why I can't do it. I can't do this stray cat life. I can't just bring in a cat, love it, and then have it just disappear. I can't do it. No, thank you. On second thought, I'll stick with my diet Pepsi. On second thought, I'll stick with my diet Pepsi. Taste the one that's forever young. Diet Pepsi. Mm. <laughs> I think the muffins aren't too used to being exposed like this. They're kind of doing their own version of hiding. Aww. Maybe she went out looking for my sister and got lost. Maybe she started acting in some Japanese TV shows. Who knows? Probably. But we found her. We didn't even tell my sister that her cat had been missing until after we found Pepsi. So she wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> then Luna passed away. It was sad, but cats don't live forever. Sorry. Sailor Moon wasn't even a good show anyway. <laughs> now, Odd Ones Out fans might know this next story. My older brother found another kitten at the gym he worked at, brought her home, and named her Azula. But the name Azula didn't stick because we found out that Azula was a dude. I was the one, by the way, who saw Azula's <laughs> firebenders and told everyone. Just wanted to get that part of the story straight. No, you can have a guy, Azula. Who cares? Azula. Is Azula... I mean, I don't even know the origins of that name. I, to me, Azula can be any gender. It's not a name like Ralphie. You know what I'm saying? Right, Ralphie? It's not like your name. You look so cute. So Azula's name had to change, and while this was happening, we had a French foreign exchange student living with us, and wow. she didn't know the word for kitten, so she called him the Baby Cat. And then we all started calling him the Baby Cat, and now that's his name, Baby Cat. That's how he got his name, Baby Cat. Uh... Since we're on the topic of pets, I have something that I probably should have mentioned a while ago. For the most part, I try to keep this channel goofy and lighthearted, which is probably why I waited so long to tell you this. But around Christmas of 2017, my dog Georgie passed away. You might remember her in some of my older videos. She was 13 years old, and just like the cats, it was her time to go. Yes, it was sad, but that's what happens to pets. 
They become your best friend, but they're not in your life forever. So mm -hmm. if you have pets, remember to appreciate them now. I wouldn't have changed anything about Georgie's life. She was a good dog. Sorry, that part got a little personal. <laughs> my dog did not take Georgie's death very well, so my parents had to get an emotional support dog for their dog, and they got Jax, because he liked to jump, so he was their jumping Jax. Aw, what a good name. That happens to a lot of people, I feel. Like, if, if a pet passes away, sometimes it's like, in order to deal with the pain, you get another animal. And then that new pet is like another 10-year commitment. But some people just do it like that, you know? My family did not ever do it like that. I do think for some people that can be like, almost like the healthiest way to move on. Because I think if you're spending a really, really long time mourning the loss of an animal, it can be detrimental and it's like, you're a person, you have to live your life. You know, you can't be suffering that long. So yeah, some people, they just get another animal as soon as one passes and that's what works best for Dan. But I guess I was kind of like that too. When Nobu was passing away, I made sure that Rocco had new brothers to hang out with like right away. And that's why I have Ralphie and Mouse. That's why you're here, mister. That's why you're here, cutie. Oh my goodness. Okay, I gotta show you guys. <laughs> Look at this dude. Just snuggled up here. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Are you okay? Yes, you go, boy. Here's it, you go, boy. And there's Mr. Mouse. There he is. And now, people, it is time for the next one. Now, cats are a very mainstream pet. A lot of people have had a cat. A lot of people know roughly what it's like to have a cat. But what about the weird pets? The less mainstream pets? The pets that you and me have no experience with? Well, it's time to learn. With Young Young Tales, we are jumping straight in with their most popular video ever, Weird Pets I Had. A lot of you guys have been asking me to check out Young Young Tales for the longest time now, and so here we are. I'm very excited, I have no idea what to expect, but let's do it! Weird Pets, Young Young Tales, three, two, one. I just wanna start off by saying that I think pets are great. They have the ability to bring so much joy into your life, as well as destruction yeah. and crap. But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still better than dealing with other people and their crap. So it's totally worth it. Most of the animators I know have had some pet of some kind. Think Jaden with her Ari, James and his many pets, and Tabs, who may have had a rooster. And I too have had my fair share of pets, including a goldfish. His name was Michael. Michael was huge. But as you could probably tell by the title, I am not here to talk about such common stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was deprived of the experience to have such pets like dogs, cats, or birds. Not necessarily because my parents didn't let me have them, well, actually that too, they didn't let me have any, but mostly because I was allergic. So me plus oh. fur resulted in me having red puffy eyes, uncontrollable sneezing, and a bad rash. So what did you get? I came upon this discovery when I was really young and I was riding a horse at my friend's birthday party. Wow, this is pretty fun, but I don't feel so good. So I guess in a way that automatically makes me not a furry. I guess that is fair. That is an accurate statement. If you're allergic to fur, you can never be a furry. But hey, good news. The fur suits are made of real fur, so you could wear one, but uh, you don't have to. Young Young Tales, you live your life the way that you want to. I'm just saying, I'm sure there's probably some furries who are <laughs> allergic to fur, and then they have to live vicariously through the fur suit. But man, what a miserable existence that would be, being a furry that's allergic to fur. I don't know, guys, I'm probably thinking a bit too hard about this. Being allergic to fur and most likely feathers as well pretty much crossed off all the typical pets I could have, which led me to some interesting alternatives. The Galgamex. Well, okay, maybe we just need to forget about the Galgamex for a second and focus- FORGET ABOUT THE GALGAMEX! <laughs> Disclaimer, before having any kind of pet, make sure you research how to properly take care of it, whether it's legal to possess and fully understand the responsibilities. Yeah, yeah, of course. Any pet, I mean, I guess this goes without saying, I guess we haven't mentioned this yet, but please don't take another living thing's life into your hands without completely understanding how to take care of it and give it the best life you can. First off, I'm curious. Like, is it still a common thing for parents to give their children rocks as their first pet? I mean, I guess it makes sense. Before you can handle Not something more complex and more alive, you have to start off simple. So, 
a rock. You feed or it, you iPad. take it for walks, you play with it. Well, luckily for me, instead of a rock, I had one of those wooden turtles that always agreed with what you're saying. I <laughs> named him Skip. He's actually still here because, you know, turtles, they can live a long time. But fake turtles, they live even longer. Whoa. Hey, Skip. Isn't K-pop like one of the greatest gifts in the entire universe? Yes. <sighs> wow. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's the real thing. None of my other pets would ever be as understanding as Skip. So after gaining valuable experience from taking care of Skip, it was time to move on to something a bit more alive, yet not something as complex as, a bit say, more alive. a goldfish. So I got a plant, wow. but not just any plant, a baby Christmas tree. Is this really like how your parents are like preparing you to take care of a life? They're just starting you with like on the lowest level, like b before beginner. It's that's a toy. The first thing that was like a toy. You're literally they're better off giving you an actual toy that you'll play with and say, take care of this because that you're not going to play with that little turtle. You're not going to break it. How do you mess that up? Isn't that right, bears? That's right, Mr. little bears, but not just any plant a baby christmas tree in my elementary school we would take a field trip to a local christmas tree farm and we were each given a baby tree to bring home every year that happened wow. the tree died <laughs> i was never able to grow it into an actual tree that could be used for christmas either i gave it too much water or i didn't give it enough so if anyone succeeded in growing one of those trees just know I am very impressed. I'm sorry to stop it again so quickly, but like a tree that starts, a tree that's that size and proportionate, I don't think can become a full-size pine tree, bro. A full-size pine tree starts out as a sapling that has like a twig with like a little, because it knows how big it's gonna get. I don't think one of those trees can become a full, guys, unless I'm crazy, I could be insane. But as a Canadian who has seen, um, I don't know, maybe one trillion pine trees in my life. I don't know, I feel like that doesn't make sense. So you would think by now that I would have learned that I did not have a green thumb, right? Ha, nope, several years later, I moved on to something more carnivorous. Mm -hmm. So you know those carnivorous plants, the plants that can eat insects? Oh my yeah, god! I decided to have some of those because I thought that they were cool. A Venus flytrap that I named Carnivine and a pitcher plant wow. that I named Victory Bell. If you didn't catch on by now, this was a time that I was uh, very much so into Pokemon. <laughs> Is Carnivine a Pokemon? Because that's an awesome name. I was going to say. Wait, I'm sorry. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm pausing it again so quickly. Carnivine. Oh, okay. That is a Pokemon. Because when he said that, I was like, that's like a Pokemon thing. I was going to say that. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Very cool. Oh, Mr. Mouse, how'd you get up on the house? Guys, we have a mouse on the house. We got a mouse on the house. <laughs> Feeding the Venus flytrap was more fun since you could actually see it close and stuff on its oh. prey because the pitcher plant didn't do anything it just let the bug sit there in its oh. belly juice slowly dissolving oh hurry up and chew your food victory bell anyways they uh <laughs> had a tragic ending that is a weird I left pet. them out in a california summer sun one day and i forgot to bring them back inside and they were pretty much burned to a crisp <laughs> after that experience i never had any more plants as pets ever again okay until one day now nah, i'm just no no, no no you can't <laughs> pull a james a wave of comments rolling in from that statement as young people i'm sure we've all had those dream pets that we all wish we had a common question related to Hedgehog. this is if you could have any creature as a pet what would you pick i'm gonna ask that literally right now i'm going to ask that right now you know i'm gonna do that homies in the community post all right, boom, upvote that for visibility. I need to be asking you guys more questions like this. Yeah, guys, go to my channel and go to the community tab. Make sure you upvote so more people see it. And then, yeah, let me know. I'm curious. I would love to hear your thoughts and stories about why you would want a certain animal. Oh boy. Yeah, where's Ralphie? Where's Ralphie, huh? Oh, there he is. Oh, Ralphie scared me, guys. I could not find him. He's behind the house. Here's the thing, just so you know. Mouse can't climb up here and do all this stuff, but Ralphie can. And Ralphie has done that before. He will climb on the sides of the cage, like this here, and he will go up onto the roof. So I have to be very careful that he doesn't do that. A common question related to this is, if you could have any creature as a pet, what would you pick? Some wish they had a tiger. I think someone on Twitter said they wanted like a pangolin Whoa, or something. That's cool. I don't know. I would have either wanted a shark or a dragon. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, I have to think about this realistically. Shark. So, of course, they're going to be expensive and difficult to take care of. 
So maybe a tame dragon would be better. Yeah, that's that's the reason why a dragon is unreasonable. Because it's expensive to, to train and feed. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, no, it's because we ain't got dragons in this world. They don't exist. That I, I think that's the larger barrier to entry, young young. As a kid, I just imagined that I would have this giant fish tank, like those huge ones wow. at aquariums, and my spare time after doing homework, I would just go swimming with my pet shark and I would rub its belly, and I would name it Steve. I guess I would have also wanted an orca as a pet because they're like my other favorite sea creature. But I think people would look down upon that nowadays, like hence the whole blackfish thing. So eh, maybe not. <laughs> Requaza or Tropius? That would be cool. Or a blue eyes white white dragon. dragon. Yeah, anyways, enough of this fantasy stuff. I just wanted to mention that if I had a choice, I would have chosen one of those. Besides, I think the closest you can get to a fantasy pet is a virtual one. Like back in the day when Tamagotchis were a thing. I didn't have any of those, but I did have several Neopets! Oh! Going back, he, when he mentioned the blue eyes white dragon, I, I think I've made that same reference on this channel. The legendary blue eyes white dragon! Oh! But the blue eyes white dragon to millennials as a kid, that was like the ultimate whoa thing. The blue eyes white dragon! You don't understand if you ain't 28. I didn't have any of those, but I did have several Neopets. I mean, who didn't? That was like the jam. Flotsam was my choice, of course. But that was only because I couldn't get a Jetsam, okay? Oh, okay, okay? And I didn't know that there were ways to get one until I looked it up just now as I was writing the script. Oh, now I'm so tempted. Uh, chances are, though, all my Flotsams are dead and I don't even remember Probably. my password. So we're moving on. So after completely failing at raising plants, I got those pets that come in a box and you just put in the water and then you watch them grow. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking about sea monkeys. And Everything Triops besides baby. an actual Nothing animal this guy the sea got. Monkeys, though. They were like really small and you couldn't even watch them eat stuff. So the triops were definitely an upgrade from sea monkeys. Wow. For one thing, they were much bigger and you could actually watch them nibble at these pellet things you gave them. And they also looked really cool. Well, compared to a sea monkey. I named the biggest one Joey and... I liked okay. Joey, so I was really sad when he died. Really, really I'll tell you sad. One thing I don't miss. I don't miss the smell because somehow these shrimp things could stink up the whole tank. They shed a lot too, so every day I was pretty much removing like all the shedded skin they left behind. Dude, how? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How large of a heart do you have to have to be really sad when one of those things passes away of old age? Dude, I'm sorry. Your parents deprived you of real animals. I just can't imagine. I can't imagine being like really sad. Like, I hope you didn't spend more than an hour being sad. I'm not trying to invalidate your emotions. I just, I don't want you to go through such pain for a creature that has such a small brain that it couldn't even comprehend the thought of sadness. You know, listen, if a creature literally cannot feel sadness, you don't need to feel sad for it when it passes of natural causes. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, that's not shedded skin. I forgot to mention they don't live very long. If you don't know this about me yet, then you should know that I like creepy crawlies. With the exception of cockroaches and some spiders, mostly the ones that can kill me. Okay. But aside from those, I'm pretty cool with having No some photos, pets. please. One that I thought was like really cool was known as the ant lion. Jeez. Or in scientific terms, the uh Mermelion mer melon today? Mermaid, okay. eh? Ant lions. I was lucky enough to have three, all of which were named Chipinch because I couldn't tell them apart. Wow. They all look the same. But the reason I think that they are so cool is, besides the way that they look, is the way they catch their prey. <clears throat> <clears throat> the ant lion. Oh, these ferocious boy. beasts would dig these pets in the sand, and they lay waiting at the bottom with their serrated jaws wide open. Oh, no. And when the unsuspecting like the prey the ant pit. comes by, the ant lion would flick sand to make the ant fall into the pit. The ant lion would then grab the helpless prey and drag it beneath the sand. 
to devour its victim. Oh, but I was so sad when he passed away. I was so sad. You just described the most horrifying way to go of all time. I really hope you are not expecting us to develop emotional attachment to these creatures, bro. And by the way, if you're digging this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you booped the like button on this video. It helps out the channel and I really appreciate it. And if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, it would be cool if you booped that button as well. And join us on the, our next adventure. Not a trace is left in sight. Yeah, I get a shot. <laughs> One of my Trebinches didn't even dig a pit, they just waited underneath the sand, so it was like impossible to tell where it was. Are you still alive? But then you'd be watching an ant crawling by and then suddenly, bam, it just gets pulled under the sand. Oh my gosh. Man, they're so cool. That's just the larva. Then they quote unquote evolve into adults or vibrava. Wow. And then they live for like a day and then they die. That's so That's interesting. That's why you only want the larva, because adults, they're just boring. They just die. It really just goes to show that it sucks to grow into an adult. I'm seeing a trend in the pets that I had. If you thought those were scary, ha! Those were nothing compared to this. Oh no. Big dude, oh, my no. camel spider. Let's all take a moment ah, to what acknowledge that this big dude with you? Really has such a beautiful, Stop it. horrifying You can't, you can't do that, oh my gosh. Many things, sun spiders, wind scorpions, or... Okay, so, okay, now we're just suddenly showing photos? We're just doing that now? Dude, you can't do that. You can't go through the whole video just drawing them all cute and then go into real photos. Dude, that's not okay. Guys, me and Cameron are gonna help you out. We're gonna give you a warning. Oh, dude, are you kidding me? What is wrong with you? Why on earth would you do that? That's not okay. Hey, you can't do that. I found him wandering around in my house and I decided to keep him. As you can see, he has these really cool jaws to eat his food and yeah, definitely was a very messy eater. But unfortunately, as bizarre and exotic as he was, did he make a good pet? No, no, not really. I didn't even have a great story about him. I just wanted to mention him really quick. Uh, okay. And lastly, I want to introduce my two scorpions, Sonic and Barkus. I can handle Sonic scorpions. was my gigantic 7 inch emperor scorpion and Barkus was my stubborn and tiny bark scorpion. <laughs> so you see where I got the name from? Yes. I got Sonic as a Christmas present from my uncle and Sonic actually escaped its cage in my uncle's house before he was supposed to give it to me. So for like an hour or two my uncle was looking all over his house for this huge scorpion. Oh my god. Definitely gosh. was a present I was not expecting. Mom wasn't too happy about him, though. Wow, that is how you don't be scared of, like, of creepy crawlies. Your uncle- I've never had an uncle who would get me a scorpion as a pet. Is that a thing that uncles do? I, I, I didn't think so. But ironically, I got Barkus from my mom. One day, she found him in our house, and she thought it was one of my fake plastic scorpion toys, because I do have those. I'm just glad she didn't try to pick it up because, you know, Barkus was a little bit more oh alive my than my toys. And I'm sure that stinger is not going to feel very That'd good. That would be terrifying. It's definitely more lethal than Sonic's. <laughs> At least for me, it's definitely not every day you come home from a long day of school and your mom suddenly tells you, Hey, we got a scorpion. But I didn't have Barkus for very long. Not necessarily because he died, but it was mostly because he was really picky with his food. And I became worried that he might starve to death, so I decided to release him back into the mountains. Wow. I hope you live well, Barkus. Sonic was a good scorpion, though. There aren't a lot of animals that you can just release into the mountains and they'll have a better life. <laughs> there are not many uh, animals you can say that. That is one surprising perk of, of, of having scorpions. I would take him out of his cage and put him in a cardboard box and I would give him pom-poms to play with. I was getting attached to Sonic. But then all of a sudden, I noticed that Sonic was acting weird. He wasn't eating. He just stayed in his cave all day. Until one day I found out Sonic had babies. Sonic oh, wow. was a girl. Wow. Ah, so how, you're, how? you're not a he. Well, that's pretty neat. <laughs> Good memories. Sonic was a part of our lives for about two, three years, but finally she passed away shortly after having her babies, which was wow. actually okay because if she lived any longer, she would have eaten the babies. 
Welcome to oh. Scorpion Kingdom, everyone. Instead of burying her to become Worm Chow, I decided to preserve her in a tub of salt. And here she is. Oh day. my gosh, dude. Okay, it. okay, okay. Those are the okay. pets that I remember having as a kid. Oh, that one wasn't so bad, but you can't, you just can't do that. You just can't do that to the people. The, the people, the people, they, the people, they work hard because they're working hard for the pay-per-view. The people, the people. The people pay pay-per-view. The people, pay the people pay. The people pay because the people want to say, because I know the people pay. The people pay, uh, are working a lot and pay pepper bill. Truer words have never been spoken. And of course, I'm not saying that these make better pets than dogs or cats or whatever. I mean, obviously, when I'm feeling down, I can't just cuddle up next to my scorpion to make me feel better. Sadly. You're just sting my face. But regardless, I am still grateful to all of them because they still made my life much more interesting. There was one creature that I haven't even talked about yet, one that I was attached and had for several years. It was and still is my absolute favorite, but that's an entire video in itself. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, listen, man, I am not happy about the photos that popped up, but the video was so ill. I gotta sub. Gotta sub, gotta boop that like button. Shout out to Young Young Tales. That was very cool. I love checking out uh, channels that I haven't seen before. And make sure you are supporting these original creators of these videos, because obviously these are animations. They take a lot of work. These people work very hard on these videos. The people pay for the pay per view. The people. Pay the people pay! The people pay because of you! People but now, we are checking out the legend. Oh, hey fellas. <laughs> I wanted to take a quick intermission to tell you about something very important. It's been a long time since I put out new merch, and I've listened to your guys' comments. You want more classic merch from your boy Robert IDK. And so I have been working on something very hard for the last several months. And since this is a video about the wonderful animals and muffins, I have made something extremely special. Ladies and jellyfish, introducing the mouse pad. I know, they said I couldn't do it. They said I couldn't do it. I can do it, and I did. Guys, is this not the most brilliant piece of merch that you've, like, I, <laughs> The mouse pad for your mouse. Here, Cameron, look. Look! Right there! Right there. Look. A mouse pad for your computer. It has every muffin on it. It's got Ralphie, it's got Mouse, it's got Rocco, it's got Nobu, it's got Moki, it's got Melvin. This is a wonderful, wonderful thing that I'm very excited about because it has all of my boys, all the boys that you guys have come to know over the last few years. And it's just a wonderful piece of art. I'm so happy about it. You're probably wondering why I don't have my own right now. It, yeah, I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. I literally just finished this like a couple days ago. But not only that, homies, we have also created the official Muffin Shirt! Rats are friends, people. Most people don't get it, but we do! This is a shirt with a couple of muffins on it. I thought I'd release them together. It's a fun shirt. It comes in blue, and it comes in pink, and then there's a black one if you just can't decide on a color, you know? And not only that, people, I thought it would be fun to also kind of have them as a bundle, so if you want to get both the mouse pad and the shirt, when you check out, put in the code MUFFIN! All caps, MUFFIN, and you will get $5 off if you buy them together, or if you buy multiple shirts. But yes, homies, go to robertidk.net and pick up some merch that I'm very, very proud of. It it'll arrive before Christmas if you order it in the next few days. And thank you for the constant support. I'm so excited for mine to come in the mail, to be completely honest. It's gonna be really fun. All right, back to the video, homies. But now, we are checking out the legend. And we are doing a bit more animal variety hour. This ain't a video about dogs. This ain't a video about cats. Well, maybe at some point it will be. But we are checking out Jaden Animations. My childhood obsession with animals. Guys, this red bar, I have not seen this video before. I always, I always say this, trust me. I clicked on this video because I wanted this expression for a thumbnail. And here's the thumbnail I ended up making. There you go. There is unequivocal proof that I clicked on this video to not watch it before. And now, let's check it out, people. Robert IDK Jaden Animations. Three, two, one. I've always been an animal lover. Ever since I saw a picture of a dog, I've been like, I want, I want that. that. I still I love and respect that. animals, but as a kid, it was pretty intense. Not gonna lie. Can we get a dog? 
Can we get a dog? Can we get a dog? My parents had to sit through years of that until my dad finally couldn't handle it anymore and got me one for my seventh it. birthday against my mom's will. Before that, they tried everything to make me stop besides getting me a dog. Wow, I was going to say it's like, if your dad got you the dog, clearly it couldn't have been that annoying because it's like a commitment to a dog is a big thing. You're not just gonna do that because your kid's being annoying. But then I thought about it for a second and I thought about how annoying kids actually can be. Kids have the unique ability where when they want to be, they, they can be on a level that adults basically can't handle. Uh, and so it can get to a point where bringing another living creature into your family home can literally be less of a pain than your child nagging about it. If you are a youngin watching this, this is not me saying you should do that. This is not me saying you should go and be annoying to get a pet. I'm not saying that. And by everything, I mean a bunch of fish. Maybe if we shape these fish into a dog, she won't notice. They'd come <laughs> home with two fish from the pet store that would last for about a week, die, and then get replaced. What? Repeat a week? The dog appears. How many fish must die before I get what I want? Since we got fish from the pet store and not an actual breeder, that was probably a big contributing factor on why they died so quickly. But as a five-year-old, I also just forgot to feed them a lot, so there's got to be some oh fish blood on my gosh. hands for that. We went through probably 20 fish in the span of a couple months, but eventually we got these two goldfish that didn't die. A true miracle. They were pretty resilient little dudes. One was Goldie, and the other was probably named Fishy. Probably some of the most creatively flawless names I've ever known. Yeah, that is pretty clear that you do not care about fish and you just want a dog. It's pretty clear based on the effort you put into naming these fish. But after a while, Goldie turned white, so I renamed it Rainbow because I thought it was cool he could change colors. I learned 13 years later from my marine biology oh, teacher no. that Goldie slash Rainbow was probably diseased, oh, which no. makes the color change less exciting. Uh, we eventually gave them away to my mom's friend and they died. But that's all <laughs> besides the point. My parents got me an army of fish and a dog I named Scruffy, but that was it. I wasn't able to crack them any further than that. And believe you me, got, I tried. You got my the dog! My parents had to become stone-faced, emotionless soldiers to keep my non-stop beseeching for more creatures at bay. After they got me a dog, I was pretty satisfied for about a year and a half until I decided I wanted a mouse. Something about their cute little faces and how they crawl with their cute little feet and their hands. made me obsess over having one and my parents got to hear all about it. Oh no, but you did, I hope you didn't just get one. Oh no, oh no. Okay guys, this is the point in the video where I have to mention, if you intend to get rats or mice, please do not get just one. It is not more work to have two rats. Rats and mice are extremely social pack animals, so they need friends to be happy. I had five before. These guys, these guys had three brothers before and they passed away so right now it's just them. But ideally you want a few. And so yeah, I really hope Jaden didn't just get one mouse. That would be not the best. I asked my parents for a mouse for years, promising how I'd take care of it and blah 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 the whole thing. My mom pretty much hates rodents because she thinks their tails are weird, so there was no budging on that one. She tried to get okay. me to stop by saying, alright you can get a mouse but we'd have to get rid of Scruffy, which is obviously a bad bang for your buck. No, what? no, no way, no, -uh. I'd never get rid of Scruffy. He's my pal for life, but not gonna lie. After hearing that response over 10 times, I started kind of considering it. Oh my gosh. I wasn't ever gosh. actually gonna do it. I was just getting desperate, all right? When I was 10, I wrote on my Christmas wish Jeez. list that I wanted a mouse. Okay, so so here's the thing. Young Young Tails and Jaden are on opposite ends of the loving living creature spectrum, I think. Young Young Tails can grow an emotional connection to insects. Jaden is potentially willing to give up her dog to trade it in for another pet. Yeah, that's uh, two very different levels of uh, attachment to... <laughs> to animals. When I was 10, I wrote on my Christmas wish list that I wanted a mouse because I thought for some reason I'd foiled their plans and found a loophole. Ha! <laughs> you can't override the power of the holy Christmas spirit. Christmas Aww. morning rolled around and I ran into the living room where all the presents were to not only find no mouse, but a computer mouse. Yay! Nice got salt him! In the got wind him! Mom. I got my hopes up way too high. My disappointment was immeasurable and, and my, my Christmas was ruined. ruined.
I did get a computer though, so that was cool. That's extremely cool. But hey, yeah, sorry. I'm glad you didn't just get one mouse because then that mouse would have had a very sad and lonely life. It doesn't matter how much time you spend with it. These creatures need friends. After my parents endured five years of me asking for a mouse, I read this book series called Maximum Ride, which was about these teenagers who had bird wings and were on the run to not get captured by the scientists who wanted to keep experimenting on them. Okay. It was my favorite book series as a kid and it made me really like birds which resulted in the next animal obsession. I swear to God, if I hear one more mention of a mouse again, I'm gonna- Mom, can we get a yellow named Amazon parrot? Yes, I started loving birds back when I was in sixth grade. Everyone say a big thanks to James Patterson for creating this bird-obsessed monster. Yay, James Patterson. At the time, I wanted one of the big boy birds. A yellow naped Amazon parrot, to be exact. I would spend hours just watching all the YouTube videos I could find of them and sending them to my parents like, Look! Look how great they are! You totally want one now, don't you, after watching one play in a box and sing Old MacDonald? This was a whole new type of fixation. <laughs> yes, honestly. I mapped out on the ground where the cage could go with tape, googled where Amazon parrot breeders were near me, I made multiple PowerPoint presentations for my parents on why they should let me get a parrot. Oh it my was gosh! This is such a jade- that is such a jaden thing to do. Making PowerPoint presentations. Listen, I know YouTubers have strange brains. We have have very strange brains and we process things in strange ways sometimes but man i respect the effort i really respect the effort powerpoint present sitting your parents down and making them watch a powerpoint presentation about something you want i mean that's dedication powerpoint presentations for my parents on why they should let me get a parrot it was intense and the pressure was on my mom was even like so how about that mouse? But no, mom, that ship has sailed. Now I want a 15-inch parrot a that lives for 80 bird. years. They started telling me, you can get a bird when you move out. And from then on, it was my goal to get out of my parents' house as soon as I could. Obviously, <laughs> I never got a yellow-naped Amazon parrot, but I never really got out of my bird phase because I've got this <sighs> that comes right here. I was pretty self-aware that asking for a parrot was a long shot, so even though I still wanted a bird, I dialed back my animal requests, and when I was 14, I started really liking flying squirrels. They were my favorite animal for a Fair. while, and that's when I realized people can have them as pets. Sugar gliders. Mom, can we- Sugar glider, add that one to the list. I don't think I actually bothered my parents too much about getting flying squirrels as much as the mouse and parrot, <laughs> but I know they knew I wanted one. And I knew they knew I knew they were gonna say no. So I guess I just kept that one a bit more internal. Yeah, be I mean, to be fair, your parents have seen you move on from like one animal, be being interested in one animal to another. I would be a little scared to get Jaden a pet. At this point, right? Child Jaden will be into one animal and then just be into a completely different one. I want you to love the same animal for its whole life, ideally, right? Imagine if I got Ralphie and Mouse and, and then I just one day was like, yeah, I don't really care about muffins that much anymore. Anymore. Now I care about uh, armadillos. And I got an armadillo now, do I? I got the muffins. So I'm in it for the long haul. I gotta love these mu- I gotta be just as excited about these muffins every day as I was when I got them. And I am. During the summer, we would visit my family in Canada, and my cousin Peyton was really obsessed with ferrets at the time. So we would spend literally entire days on the computers together, researching ferrets and flying squirrels and Amazon parrots because they were still my number one obsession, let's course, not forget. We wrote down general facts we learned in Word documents, planned out how to care for them, added up how much money they cost including cages, food, bedding, etc, etc. We were the same amount of obsessed. It was a lot of fun actually. We bonded a lot during those times and she's still one of my best friends. She also never got a ferret, so sad times there. Peyton also got a rat named Lola and that made me really want a rat. Which of course meant Mom! Mom! Lola was so sweet and smart, and I always wanted to play with her. But that's also true with almost anyone's pets. Nah, nah, nah. Let's keep it real. Muffins are special. Everyone comes to meet the muffins, and they think, oh, this'll be interesting. You know, just, you know, it's a little it's a rat, whatever. And then they meet them, and they're like, oh my gosh. They are little geniuses with little personalities. And they're all different. No two muffins are the same. And then they realize, Robert, I guess. 
it. I get it now. I didn't understand it, but now I do. If I come over to your house and you have any type of pet, I will be personally offended if you don't let me play with it for at least three hours. <laughs> so I did have a small point where I was asking if my parents would let me have a rat and my mom was like, nope. And I'd be all, but what about the time you were gonna let me get a mouse because I was asking for a parrot? And she would say, nope, that ship has sailed. Touché, mother. During 10th grade, I was also starting to really like raccoons. I thought they were sneaky and cool. And Adorable. I googled if people had them as pets as a random, not serious thought. But surprise, surprise, some people do have raccoon pets. I looked into this as well. <gasps> Just kidding, they rip up couches and dig holes in walls. And I'm not that devoted to raccoons. But I still dreamed about having a raccoon buddy yep. someday. Yep, Finally, I feel that completely. Finally, I graduated from high school and moved into a dorm in college that didn't allow pets. Which was torture for me. I waited all this time to move out, and I'm still not Just able one to more bring year, a horde of mice, rats, birds, sugar gliders, and maybe a raccoon into the rooms. But YouTube started kicking off shortly after, and I moved back in with my parents to pursue that. Flash forward a bit, and I was finally able to get Ari. After 10 years of wanting a bird, I'd finally done it. And what a gander he is. Was he worth the wait? Yes. No, he's a dumb bird. <laughs> Oh. You're good. You're a good bird. I'm not currently looking to get any more animals right now, even though I really want them. I have Ari and he's already enough of a handful, so I can't commit to anything else right now. Yeah, I mean, if you do give like a bird a proper life where it's out of its cage a lot of the time and you're just, you're living with it, that is a huge handful. Like if you haven't seen the, the video where Jaden talks about having Ari, we looked at it in the previous YouTuber pets video. So after this video, you should definitely check that out if you haven't seen it for whatever reason. But yeah, it sounds like this uh, that bird is a lot of work. Like a parrot, a lot of work. If you want to raise it right, that is. Like a, like with the muffins. Like with the muffins. Come here, you gotta come outside. Grab it. There you go. Mousington. Mousington. You coming out, buddy? Come here, Mr. Mouse. Anything for the food, these lads. I am gonna get a dog eventually, that's a promise. And I do really like reptiles, so I've done my fair share of research on skinks, but that's only a 30% chance to actually happen. I haven't really grown out of my animal phase. I've just become a mix of that and my parents. Still hopelessly entranced by creatures, but also being the one who has to tell myself no because I have other yep, stupid responsibilities. Yep. Hopefully when I have kids, they won't be as animal obsessed as I am because I don't think I have the strength my parents had to be able to say no to <laughs> any animals they ask for. Yeah, that's just something, that's something that as an adult, you have to, you kind of have to, accept and be strong and smart about. Like, yeah, if you guys couldn't tell, I'm pretty obsessed with animals. I love animals so much, but I I can't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just not gonna get a bunch of animals because it's a, such a big responsibility. I will only get animals if I can give them the best life possible. And yeah, I just have to be mature and realistic and not adopt or take in animals that I can't handle which is most animals because I have a very busy life. And now we will close it off with a short one. Checking out another channel for the first time, the highly requested Emmy Ritchie, my adorable first pet. The people pay, the people pay. The people pay because the people are one of you. People, people, people mm. pay. Because I know the people, 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 people. We're gonna close it out with this one. Let's get to know Amiri Chu and their adorable first pet. Three, two, let's go. I didn't understand the joy of owning a pet until after I graduated college. So Soli and I were roommates during our senior year of college and after we graduated, we continued to be roommates in a different apartment, which happened to be near an animal shelter, mm. which is where we adopted this adorable snowshoe kitten and named him Prince, a name Soli chose based off of the little prince. I'll spare you the boring adoption details, but more importantly, look at how cute he was. <gasps> yes! <laughs> Yes! Him. I just want to squeeze his fuzzy little cheeks. He's such a beautiful boy. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you for giving us photos early on in the video and not just drawing this this cat for the for 90% and then showing like a picture randomly at the end. Okay. This this is this is the cutie. This is the cutie right here. Okay, very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Amirichu. Thank you, Ralphie Barrington. Come here, come here, bud. Put down here. Yeah. Nope. Oh, no. Okay, don't run away, you silly goose. Ralphie, come here. 
See, he he's got the he's got the he's got it ready. He's got it. Okay, there you go. There you go. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got the little bear. Hello, Ralphie. It's okay, you shy little guy. It's okay. You can hang out with Dad for half a second. Just half a second. That's all I ask, buddy. I mean, not not really. I guess more like thirty seconds would be cool. As I've mentioned before, guys, my boys Ralphie and Mouse are particularly very shy and very skittish. I've explained this before, but it's because I got them from a pet store when they were already four months old. If you get rats from a young enough age, especially ones from a trained breeder, they'll be much more social and comfortable, kind of like how Rocco and Nobu were. It's okay, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Ow, 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 ow. Thank you for humoring me very briefly, buddy bear. Okay, yeah, he's gonna do an escort, uh, a covert mission, a covert op, and he's gonna slide down and scratch me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, buddy, I'll let you back in. You did good. You did good, Ralphie. You did good. Good job. Now you get food. Good job. The one thing that really stuck out to me when I first saw him was that he looked like a cute little mascot for a Magical Girl series with that little forehead power gem. Finally, I was one step closer to fulfilling my childhood dream of becoming a magical girl. Yes! Just imagine, me in my super cute flowy magical girl dress with my adorable little sidekick by my... What? What are you doing? Man, this is very, this is very girly princessy. This is almost a little too much girly princessy for me to handle. This is my first time watching Emirichu. A lot of you guys recommended it, so I'm, I'm gonna power through. But so far, maybe a little too. Oh my god, my little cute. I want to squish his nose. You know, um, so we'll see. We'll see how this goes. So after spending a significant amount of time with Prince, I've come to the conclusion that despite his deceptively magical looking appearance, he would make a terrible mascot. Oh. Because suppose he was granted the ability to speak and magic powers. He is still at his very core, a cat. True. So I imagine my hypothetical superhero life going a little something like this. <laughs> Emiri Chu learns how to use her weapon. Prince, I need help! How do I activate my power staff? All right, listen to me carefully. This is very important. Okay. The secret to activating your staff is... Prince? Bruh. P Prince? Distracted. P Prince, the staff! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need, sounds need, about on. right. I need to mess with this dangly thing for a second. That is how it works, isn't it? Yeah, I guess we don't even think about this in these shows. We have these cat overlords or dog Holy sages, man. and they speak English and they give us wisdom, but really the most powerful thing of all is that they are a cat and they aren't immediately distracted by a laser pointer or a dangling thing. Episode 2, Emiritu is called to action. It's time for action! My signal's going off! Someone's in need of our help! But I'm in the middle of my nap. Yeah. Prince, this is serious! I can't transform without you! Unless you have treats ready for me, I do not intend to move from this. <laughs> That's reality! Emiritu runs to the scene of the- <laughs> In heels, okay, that friend. wasn't smart. We're almost there. Get ready. Wait. Huh? What? What are you? I need cutouts. I, I gotta clean this one spot real quick. Oh my god! Right now? Yeah. This is like super important. Give me a sec. Uh... You can clean yourself later. We gotta go. So maybe not the best candidate for a Maho Shoujo mascot, but he can at least look the part. I've noticed I've become one of those cat moms who are constantly ready to shove pictures of their cats in people's faces. Mm -hmm. It's all fine and dandy when oh, you're around other cat it. owners and you exchange cat pictures like candy, but then with other people who don't relate to how you feel about your cat, the enthusiasm is just not there. That's why you have social media, because not all of the homies care about your animals, but someone on social media cares about your animals. You know, when I post the muffins, I know not every single person on earth loves the mu loves muffins, but there are people who will appreciate it. So post your pets on the social medias, homies. Hey, Ditus. Hey, Ditus. Look at this adorable picture of Prince. Emily, you, you've already shown me this picture like at least like 20,000 times already. Give it a break. Gotta take I new know, ones. No, but I just wanted to remind you how cute he is. Isn't he just the sweetest? Eh, he's all right. Oh, ow. Look at, Look at that cute little face. 
I see him all the time. You don't have to show me every single picture, okay? Look at my son. Oh, no. Look at him! Look at him! <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm very. I am quite receptive to animal pictures. A good, cute animal picture. I love it. That's a good picture right there. I'm gonna keep it real. I would be receptive to that picture. But if the homie keeps pulling up in my face, saying, "Look at his cute widow face. <laughs> Look at his cute widow face." Oh, that would be a little much for me, guys. That would be a little much for me. As soon as you change the word "little" to "widow," I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Out. I, I'm out. I know, I know, guys. I do talk. I do kind of baby talk my, my muffin Barringtons. Right, mister. But it's not like baby talk. It's silly talk. The widow. Widow. Instead of little. That's enough to drive me insane. I can't do that. I can't do that. But I can give love to my little muffin. Isn't that right, little muffin? Mr. Rousey Barrington. There you go, bud. There you go. <laughs> Good boy. Look at him! Look into his big, uh -huh. beautiful, yeah. hypnotic Holy. eyes and yeah. tell me he isn't no, the that, cutest no, that, freaking okay. cat you've ever I'm seen good. in your entire life. It. It. You know what? He is cute. But I hate you. <laughs> Since I've never owned a pet before Prince, I had no idea what it felt like to be so emotionally attached to one animal, and the thought of it kind of messed me up at times. Yeah, I'll explain fair. what I mean in a second. Soleil, on the other hand, is no stranger to owning pets. She's had rats, cats, ferrets, rabbits, and a dog, so she's been familiar with the roller coaster of emotions yep. that comes with loving and losing an animal. So one night at our old apartment, I was working on a video, and Prince was curled up next to my feet taking a nap. At a certain point in the night, sad boy hours hit. Now I describe sad boy hours as a time of night where you've stayed up for a little too long and you start thinking sadder thoughts than you usually would, either because sleep deprivation is kicking in or because it's dark outside and suddenly you feel more alone. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like one minute you're minding your own business, maybe doing homework or something, and the next thing you know you're reading about the Titanic at two in the morning because your morbid yep, curiosity got the happens. best of you and now you're sad. We've all been there. Now, normally, when I hit sad boy hours, that's an indication that I need to go to bed, and at this point, I'd be turning my computer off and getting ready to sleep. You know, I guess, I, it, you know, guys, this is all just hitting me. She's talking about these sad boy hours, and she's pointing to, like, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and it is kind of hitting me right now. I haven't had sad boy hours in a long time, because I sleep at a normal human time now. A few years ago, I stopped staying up really late, and I started going to bed at, like, like, no later than like 12 and then I can wake up at a normal time like 8 or 9 or sometimes 7 you know and I can honestly say I don't have sad boy hours like that anymore I do think a big part of sad boy hours comes from you being awake when most of the world isn't I, I genuinely believe that because I don't really deal with that anymore and I used to wow but I had a video deadline looming over me that week and I decided Oof. to power through the night this was a mistake I remember looking over at Prince's sleeping body and being overcome with these thoughts. One day, I'm going to outlive you. You're not even a year old yet, but one day, you're going to become old and I'm going to have to experience the pain of losing an animal for yep. the first time yep. in my life. I don't know when it'll happen, but I don't know if I'll be ready for it. At some point in the future, I will no longer be able to see you look at me with those beautiful eyes. Oh my eyes. gosh. I don't know how I'm going to handle it when that day comes. <laughs> I love you so much. I just, I just want you to be happy forever. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So I spent like 20 minutes sobbing on top of a cat at like 3 a.m. Don't judge me, okay? We've all had moments like this. No, I no, I feel that. I feel that. There are times like that. I I feel like you think that way more when you have one animal. Because there's like, it's slightly less worrisome when you have multiple, or at least you just think about it differently, I guess. I don't know really how to describe it, but I remember having those exact feelings when I had a family dog. And I guess when I first got Rocco and Nobu, and I was thinking about like their life expectancy and all that and I like kind of dealt with that emotionally because before you get rats you need to realize that they only live two years on average and so you got to be ready for that beforehand I mean you're never like fully ready obviously but yeah I think a lot of people including myself can relate to those moments where you kind of process that whole thing even though it hasn't happened yet nobody is immune to sad boy hours all right that's a fact 
That's Aside true. from the intrusive death thoughts, having a cat has been a wonderful experience. I mean, technically, he's Soleil's cat, not mine. But we adopted him together, so I claim ownership as his second mama. I'm not a deadbeat. I go to my son's soccer games. I pay my child support in the form of treats and good, toys. Good, good, good. And I'll always love him, even if he'd make a terrible sidekick. To be fair, yeah, pretty much every pet would be a bad sidekick. But on the positive side, we aren't superheroes who need to uh, fight crime. So our pets working better as the snuggle machines is okay. That's okay. And people, that was Emirichu. I'm gonna hit that sub button. I'm gonna boop that like button. And this was a grand old time. Thank you for exploring the world of YouTuber pets with me. Make sure you are subscribed to all of these people that we checked out if you like the video. All of their links will be in the description. Here's the last time we looked at YouTuber pets. If you haven't seen this video, guys, the party is not over for you. You gotta keep going and watch this one too. Or here's a video that YouTube thinks you will like. I will see you here. I will see you there. Have a great day, homies. Peace.